Hi, it's Katrina. From controlling mountains to creating new stars, here are 10 earth-shattering facts about gravity. Number 10. Birds in Space Could a bird survive in space? While we have taken several different kinds of animals up into space with us, like dogs and monkeys, astronauts have never taken a bird into space. But if we did, would it still be able to fly? Birds are built for flying, and takeoff and landing is adjusted for the Earth's gravity. In zero gravity on a space station, birds would still need to flap their wings to build up speed, and again to slow down. Since gravity doesn't pull them down, they would actually use much less energy and could just glide. That is, if they were able to adjust and compensate for being weightless. However, what if a bird was just released into space? Besides all of the atmospheric conditions that it would need to survive, unlike other animals, birds actually rely on gravity to help them swallow and digest their food. Gravity helps them push nuts and seeds down into their digestive system. So while birds could hypothetically still fly perfectly fine in space, no food equals no bird. Number 9. It stops mountains from getting too high Have you ever asked yourself, why aren't there any mountains taller than Mount Everest? Mount Everest is the tallest mountain on Earth at 8,850 meters above sea level. While there are some other mountains that are actually taller than Everest if you count the distance from the base to the summit, if you look at the world's tallest mountains, they seem to be capped at about 10,000 meters or 6 miles high. If you look at other planets such as Mars, a volcano was discovered to be nearly 22 kilometers high. It is so high that it sticks out of the atmosphere and so wide that it is about the same size as Arizona. So why is it that mountains on Earth don't get bigger? The answer is gravity. It all has to do with the pressure exerted by gravitational forces on the Earth's surface. It's no problem lifting a heavy object like a refrigerator somewhere like the Moon where the gravity is just about 17% to what it is on Earth. The bigger a heavy thing like a mountain gets on Earth, the greater the pull of gravity. All that weight slowly crushes the base of the mountain. The pressure becomes so great that it begins to liquefy. If the base can't grow as much, the peak can't get higher. The surface gravity on Mars is only about 38% that of the Earth, so mountains can get much taller. Gravity on a neutron star, however, is so strong that mountains, or irregularities on the surface, can only get to about 5 millimeters, give or take. Number 8. It interferes with your waterworks One of the unfortunate realities of being in space involves your bladder. The pressure exerted by gravity is crucial in knowing when you need to urinate. So guess what happens when you're somewhere with zero gravity? That's right, things can get wet and wild. Down on Earth, you need to go or should go when your bladder is one-third full. In space, the urge to go is only triggered when the bladder is almost entirely full. In the past, space agencies provided astro diapers. But now, the easy solution? Astronauts are trained to go every two hours just in case. And now for number 7. But first, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't already. Number 7. Gravity Research Foundation Gravity is a scientific fact accepted as part of our day-to-day -day lives, but there was a time when people weren't so understanding. Gravitational concepts are credited to the discovery of Isaac Newton when he saw an apple fall from the tree while he was thinking about the forces of nature. In the late 1600s, you can imagine people no doubt didn't really understand this idea. To many, it was crazy. But even more recently, in the mid-20th century, some issues with gravity were brought up. In 1948, a certain Roger Babson declared war on gravity, writing a manifesto titled Gravity, Our Enemy Number One. He saw the undeniable force as an obstacle to be overcome by science. There was a personal reason behind Babson's crusade. Sadly, his sister had drowned, with Babson holding gravity responsible for the tragedy. His Gravity Research Foundation hoped to realize the dream of a shield that would protect humans from the dangerous influence. This never came to pass, and in later years, the GRF came to respect gravity just a little. Number 6. Why do flames look the way they do? Here's a fact that may surprise you about gravity. Without it, we wouldn't have flames the way that we know them as rising upwards into a narrow tip with a hint of blue at the base surrounded by orange. How do flames wind up that way in the first place? The answer is that gravity kind of squeezes them into that form. For starters, Earth is packed with oxygen, which is the fuel fire needs to burn. When you light a candle, the flame heats the air surrounding it and reduces the density. Because the air in the hot zone is now lighter, the flame rises and stretches. Gravity then forces cold air downwards, giving the fire fresh oxygen to feed on, and so fire gets higher and spreads. 
Space has precious little oxygen. Not good conditions for fire, but if you struck a match in a space station with limited oxygen supplies, the flame would be round and blue, not tall and orange. It's blue because the dramatic effect of hot gases rising doesn't occur in zero G. Put simply, fire in space is a lot more boring than on Earth. Number five, Lagrange points. A stunning way in which gravity demonstrates its power lies in Lagrange points. Named after mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange, who thought of them in 1772, they are gravity zones in space created when two gravitational forces interact with one another, a classic example being the Earth and the Moon. The effect is an entirely separate field of gravity that could be compared to a whole other star. Lagrange points have been called parking places because you could make a kind of galactic rest stop there in your spacecraft. You could orbit around a Lagrange point even though there's nothing at the center of it. It's been calculated that planets and stars have an average of five possible Lagrange points, though don't expect a smooth ride if you find one. That's due to some of these points being pretty dangerous. For example, land on the wrong spot and you could be sucked into the Earth. Or even worse, the Sun. That would definitely be one hot mess. Number four, Galileo was right. An American astronaut from 1971 got to teach a lesson in ancient physics out in the depths of space, one that involved the effect of gravity on falling objects. Galileo believed that all things essentially fell at the same rate. There was just one thing stopping them from doing so, air. He dropped a hammer and a feather simultaneously, and sure enough, the feather fell more slowly. No surprises there, right? We know feathers take their sweet time floating down to Earth. Air resistance guarantees a more graceful descent than a hammer. No science degree required for that one. When NASA's David Scott decided to do the same thing on the surface of the moon, however, Galileo was proved definitively correct. The hammer and the feather hit the floor at the same time without all that pesky air, and of course gravity getting in the way. Isaac Newton was born the year after Galileo died, so the famous object dropper didn't get to find out about gravity, but we're sure he would have been fascinated by the space-bound reenactment of his legendary experiment. Number three, star formation. Gravity is so powerful that it forces gases such as hydrogen and helium to collide together, creating stars. The force of gravity becomes so strong that as the atoms collide, they create heat and fuse together. The heat generates pressure, pushing the atoms apart, but the gravity becomes stronger and pulls them together. Eventually, the star will reach an equilibrium where the expanding pressure and the gravitational force balance each other out. Then the star will burn in a relatively stable way for a long time, until it runs out of fuel. When a star begins to die, it can't support itself against its own gravity and it collapses. Depending on the mass and the force of gravity, a star will become a white dwarf or a supernova, or under extreme forces of gravity, become a black hole. Gravity determines a star's entire life and the way it will end. Number two, we don't really understand it. One of the most interesting things about gravity is that much of how it works is still a mystery. We know it exists, but experts can't explain everything about it. Seeing how it works with stuff like when you drop a feather in space or seeing what happens between planets is one thing. But there are various questions about gravity that still remain unanswered. One of the most important ones is, can gravity be controlled? Although it seems very unlikely, there was an experiment conducted in 1992 where a superconducting disk was apparently used to affect gravity and reduce it by 2%. A more fundamental question is about the way gravity pulls inward on things. Why doesn't it push outward? Can it push outward? It's thought the force might also be capable of pushing through something called dark energy. Dark energy is basically anti-gravity that's believed to be behind the continuing expansion of the universe. But finding concrete evidence of this is obviously difficult. Gravity is there and has a major effect on our lives, but it seems this is just the tip of the iceberg. Number one, flying on Titan. I saved the fun for last. Titan is one of Saturn's moons and is known for its super dense atmosphere and freezing temperatures. It is the second largest moon in our solar system after Jupiter's Ganymede. Though you'd need one heck of a protective suit to keep the elements out, it's minus 289 degrees Fahrenheit by the way, there is an amazing thing you'd be able to do if you did manage to visit the place. Fly! Titan's atmospheric pressure is 60% greater than that on Earth, so walking on Titan would be kind of like walking in a swimming pool. Since the pull of gravity is lighter and the atmosphere is thicker, you'd be a small fraction of your body weight on its surface. Meaning, if you had a pair of wings fitted and you started beating them, you could conceivably take off and take a tour of Titan from the air. Be careful though, as crash landing on Titan is more hazardous than crash landing on Earth. The surface is covered with lakes of methane and it rains down a gasoline-type liquid quite often, 
So the environment, of course, isn't the best for us humans, but it is fun to imagine a planet where we could fly just by batting our arms. Thanks for watching! Hope you learned something new today! Let me know what topics you'd like to see in future videos in the comments below! See you next time! Bye!